YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be walking you through the Azure Sentinel informational model on process events for normalized schema. So grab your favorite beverage and a little snack because you know this one is gonna make a huge impact. Snack impact, look how I did that. Cool. Normalization and the Azure Sentinel information model. So Azure Sentinel ingests uh, data from many sources Working with various data types and tables together requires you to understand each of them and write and use unique sets of analytic rules, workbooks and hunting queries for each type of schema. Sometimes you'll need to separate rules, workbooks and queries, even when data types share common elements such as firewall devices. So correlating between different types of data during an investigation and hunting can be very challenging. Um, so on the page here, uh, Azure Sentinel uh, normalization. Okay, so the ASIM actually uh, provides a seamless experience for handling various sources in uniform and normalize. So allowing for source agnostic content and solutions, simplifying analytic use of data in Azure Sentinel workspaces and using query time parsing while minimizing uh, impact and performance. So the model actually aligns with the open source security events, metadata, common information model, allowing for predictable entity correlation across normalized tables. Now, I know I've just jumbled a lot of words in there because I basically just read a part of this. Um, but what this actually means as a whole, if we scroll down and we're going to go to the components here. So we're going to look at like the normalized schema here. Uh, so each schema defines the field that represents an event, a normalized column naming convention and a standard format for the field values. So ASIM currently defines the following schemas. So we have network session, DNS activity, process event, authentication event and registry event. You then have the parser component. So once you deploy uh, the normalizing parser, to uh, Azure Sentinel or your log analytics workspace. This will then give you the ability to use these schemas in KQL functions. And I'll actually show you this uh, in a demo uh, shortly. Um, and then you have the content for each normalized schema. So this is for like analytic rules, workbooks and hunting queries. So I wanna just focus on the process event here. So I've got the tab open already. So just scroll to the top. So the process event normalization schema is used to describe the operating system activity of executing and terminating a process. So if we just scroll down here, we can look at the parses here. So an event creation is a security event of event ID 4688. Termination is 4689. The same with Sysmon. So a Sysmon process creation is event one. And then termination is event five. And then you have the ability to have the parser for Microsoft 365 Defender for Endpoint process creation. So the great thing about these parsers uh, and the event normalization is actually under the hood, it creates a bunch of KQL functions. Now, these functions are great for shortening your query instead of using massive parsers. So if I just go back onto here and we just click the GitHub link. What we're going to do is we're going to actually focus again on the process here. So if we just click in the ASIM process, we can scroll down here and this is obviously the deploy button. So if we click this, this is going to actually deploy this. But before we do that, I just want to talk to you about um, what actually this is going to do if you still don't quite understand uh, the informational model process. So we want to focus on process creation. So within this process creation YAML file, I'm just going to click inside this. And here you can see a parser name. So it's IM process create. And what this is doing here is using the union is fuzzy true to basically look at Microsoft 365 Defender, uh, Microsoft Sysmon events and security events. So if we go back a step further and then we actually look into the product parsers and then we look at Sysmon create. OK, so if you've ever dealt with Sysmon and you've tried to pass queries before, you know, it's a real pain in the ass. Uh, your queries are absolutely ginormous um, and sometimes you're not getting, you know, that data richness uh, which you would like. So this is where Microsoft have created this Azure Sentinel information model process. So now we're going to click inside the, uh, the Sysmon Create 
And here you've just got the parser name. OK, so this is Vim Process Create Microsoft Sysmon. Now, this here is the meat and bones of a parser and it is huge. So you can kind of see if you worked, like I mentioned, with parsers before, you'd be able to see uh, common elements here. So, you know, we're parsing um, a lot of XML formats here, the data format, etc. So this is extremely huge. Now, again, if you're trying to find a query and you need to figure out, you know, the hash or the logon ID or the user, uh, the parent image, uh, the process, the command line, etc. You have to do all of this with Sysmon. So using the Azure Sentinel information model process event normalization, this actually takes all that work out for you. And you basically hit this one command, which launches this function. Uh, and then it gives you much more data richness. So I'm just going to go back on here and then I'm going to scroll down and what we're going to do is we're going to actually deploy this now. OK, so let's hit deploy on this and this will take us to a, uh, another screen. So this actually brings up the, um, the custom deployment for the ARM template. So here I'm just going to select uh, the resource group, which my um, bug analytics workspace is sat in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grab our workspace name because I can't actually remember it. And I'm just going to paste this here and the location uh, was West Europe. And I'm going to go review and create. And then click create. So what this is doing is this is actually deploying uh, the parser normalization data. Um, so that's actually deployed. So what we're going to do is I'm going to flick over um, to my Sentinel dashboard, which already has the parser uh, deployed already and the um, data that we can use. Uh, currently, this workspace has no, no data. So I'll wait for this to finish, uh, even though we're not going to use it. Um, and then I'll flick over to the actual uh, one that we're going to use with the data. Okay, so before we actually uh, dive into this, I want to trigger um, a process first so we can actually all run through together the same query. So I'm just bringing my um, demo uh, virtual machine up here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to navigate to C system 32. We're going to go CMD. I'm just going to copy this, punch this on the desktop, and then I'm going to rename this to CDM. OK, so you may remember that I actually did this in a previous uh, video. Uh, it was for masquerading techniques. You notice this is the same uh, procedure what we're doing right now. So I'm just going to go IP config, uh, nest app, and I'm going to clear. No, that's Linux, CLS. Let's get rid of this and then let's just delete this process. OK, so now we've got the data, we can actually go back on to the dashboard. Um, so I'm just going to go into logs here. Uh, again, this welcome message appears every time, uh, even though I select, you know, don't show all queries. Uh, I'm just going to burn that for a second. Let's move this across. OK, so the normalization, if we go over to functions over here, and we open Azure Sentinel. No, it's not that one. It's workspace functions. So you can remember in the uh, the GitHub page, it showed us um, various functions which give the parsing uh, for uh, the function. So if I look at I am uh, process create, I can actually load the function just by hovering over. OK, so uh, we can actually run this and this is going to uh, produce various options for the related functions. So here we've got various process creates um, using Sysmon um, from our virtual machine that we're just on now. So that's great. We can see, you know, the first bits. But what I'm interested in is the process functions, whoops, from uh, Sysmon actually just creating that. So we can see here that as the same in the YAML file, um, that this is passing a bunch of data. So, you know, actually under the hood, you can see the normalization is, is doing a great deal of work here. Now, 
if you've worked with Sysmon before, you know that this is a real pain. You know, passing all this is honestly just a, just a nightmare. Um, so if I move on to the next one and I just grab uh, functions again, actually, let me just go Vim process, create Microsoft Sysmon, and then I'm just going to hit enter on this. Okay, this is one uh, single line of command. Okay. Um, and then we've got all this data. So it very may look similar when you do uh, event source equals sysmon, etc. So you still have the event data here, the parsing XML, but here is where it gets really juicy. So here now you actually have uh, the actor username, the resource ID, the process GUI, the process ID, the process name, the file version, the file description, uh, original file name, command line, current directory, system 32, obviously user, the hash, uh, acting process, acting process name, command line. So you can see straight away, right off the bat, that this single process is doing all that parsing for you and normalizing all that data in such a structured format that it will give you the, so much benefit in creating your queries. So for the uh, operation that we just performed uh, on our test machine, if we go where original file name equals equals and then cmd.exe number code sensitive because it's equals equals uh, whoops and then we hit enter on this okay this is limited our results down that's fine uh, and then we can go where a current directory does not contains uh, and then we can go c colon backslash backslash and it will be windows and then it will be backslash backslash system 32 backslash backslash hit that again this has brought our query down even more and then to finalize it off we can go where command line uh, contains and then cdm so in four lines uh, of code we have the operation which we wanted um you know, we, we, we've seen that our CMD is our original file name. We can see the current directory it was not ran from, uh, and then it was actually renamed. Uh, here, if we scroll down, CMD, command line, current directory on the desktop. So if I bring up another uh, query tab here, and I'm just going to copy and paste the old masquerading technique, which uses um, Sysmon. So you can see straight off the bat, He's got 10 lines here. Now, if I run this, we get pretty much the same data. Um, exactly the same process here. So you can definitely see that there is a great deal of um, help that it's, it, it, this normalization is doing. So I'm doing no bag unpack. I'm doing no bag expansion. I'm not evaluating pivots. I'm not, um, you know, moving columns. I'm not expanding columns. You know, I'm... It's in, in four lines, I've, I've pretty much found what I'm looking for. So using the source agnostic parser and using the normalized field names and values honestly improves the usability of this data parsing in Azure Sentinel. So your analyst doesn't need to actually see the parsing data function because that's taken care of within the function. So the analyst can now focus on building the actual detection query itself instead of trying to parse a bunch of data. So is ASIM available today? Yes, it is. You can deploy the parsers from GitHub like we've just gone through in this video. Um, is there any cost to using ASIM? No. So ASIM uses query time parsing and normalization. So the normalization data is not stored in a separate table. So there's no extra cost. It does add to the compute resource used. However, Azure Sentinel does not charge for query uh, computer resources therefore there's no cost can you modify your already created analytics yes you can with a few simple tweaks you can quickly amend your analytic rules providing you've obviously deployed the uh, the passes of course so how many schemas are currently available so there are five available so you have network for networking sessions http sessions and notable sessions you have authentication for log on and log off you have process for creations and terminations. You have registry for create, update, and delete, and DNS for query. So Microsoft are adding more schemas as we speak. So by the time this video is live, I would imagine there to be uh, a couple more available. And honestly, this is such a great move by Microsoft. 
I know all us security people, it's it's a real nightmare for when we're trying to develop a query and we need to pass a bunch of data where really we need to be focusing on the security incident at hand. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your nan. Cheers.